have a talk by Peter Shade, uh, who has been the head of the framing department in the National Gallery in London since 2005. Responsible for the frames of more than 2,000 paintings, which make up the UK's major collection of European art, Peter has to date changed over 350 frames in the permanent collection. Born in East Germany, Peter moved to London in 1990 when he first worked with picture frames. And uh, I'll let him get on with it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Um, and I hope uh, it will be entertaining. I'm trying to both, both talk about frames in general, about the specific approach that I, I kind of, um, or that we currently um, have to f uh, the frame, framing the National Gallery, and how that particular way of looking at frames or changing the frames um, came about. I'll try, I'm, I'm trying to kind of do a sort of partly a historical arc towards that. Um, this frame around the title is, is roughly the kind of frame that most people think of when they think of an old master frame. They think of a, a gold frame, with, with typically with center and corners, which, which, is, which was the dominant old master frame um, throughout the 19th century and well into the, into, into the 20th century, a French 18th century frame, basically, because so many of the paintings that came um, to our collections came via the, the great collections of uh, uh, great French collections of the 18th century, um, and the National Gallery has gone, got one of the one of the best frames that we have um, of this type is, is on Poussin, celebration of, of the Golden Calf, um, not the original frame of of course was on Poussin, but a frame that was made about 80 years after. So it's a frame from about um, 1715 um, of, of extraordinary quality. Uh, the, kind, the, the kind of these frames are the, 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 in terms of just purely in terms of craftsmanship and, and, and skill, these were the most skillful frames ever made. And, and frames of this quality are kind of the, the explanation why these frames were so popular for such a long time. <clears throat> the, 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 they must have had vast workshops working on these because, because the, the, the skill level. Um, it wasn't. Uh, it, it was, was the, the, the various skills working on this were, were, were kind of um, much more diverse than, than, than in any other period of frame making. So this would have been carved in oak by a carver, and then covered in in, in, in gesso, which is which is the normal way. But then the, the, the particular French um, skill is this fine recutting. So it would have been a completely different person. All these all this sort of detail, all the little veins, all the all the little um, textures that are, that are various textures in the frame, there would have been a completely different person doing that. And then somebody else would have done the gilding and, and other people would have finished the, the, the toning of the frame. And, and they, they, they look to start with a bit like their 19th century cousins or the 19th century kind of what 19th century then made out of, out of these things. But, but these early 18th century frames when they're of great quality, they're, they're, they're sort of astonishing in their inventiveness. I mean, you have to kind of, it, uh, when, you, when you look at it like that, you could never see that well, the detail I'm showing you is kind of these little, these little bits there are actually faces in, on the frame that are kind of part of the ornament. And then there are other heads and, and, and sometimes there are dragons and other things sort of hiding amongst this, this, this exquisitely carved Ornament. You can even see that these faces are not just the same face over and over again. This is somebody who's kind of looking up. They've got character, and 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 and, and to a, to a degree that is that is completely uh, superfluous. Nobody who looks at the Poussin really, very few people will will see the frame to the detail of of of, of these these very very fine, um, um, uh, finely carved. Uh, ornaments and, and and even when you look at something so simple like like this leaf here, you can see that here it comes comes around and swings back, and here it's just the same on the other side. The pendant just goes flat the other way. So, that, so everything is done as if as if it's alive, as if it if it's actually grown, which is which is which is um, really really uh, amazing. And we've got another frame of this of also of this quality, and then this uh, this on the Rigo is the actual original frame. So this was the, the first frame that, for the painting. 
And at the moment when Rigo was at the height of his power, actually the year before he, he doubled his price for, prices for portraits, and this is one of the leading bankers in, 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 in Paris. So, so it's, it's somebody very, very wealthy being, being, being painted by, uh, one, by the leading portraitist of the, of the time. Um, and, and, and I'm sure the frame was made with, with no expense spared. So it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really great example. But in our gallery, where it's shown like that, I took the picture um, earlier this week, um, of course it doesn't really um, show why frames like this exist. Because they weren't, I mean in this case, it's completely suitable because you have um, carved and gilded furniture in, 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 in the, in, in the picture as well, and, and, and it kind of was echoed by the by the frame, but but, but um, um, in the Louvre, there's a by the same artist the portrait of of, of um, Louis the Fifteenth, and, and where in the Louvre it's 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 shown an attempt of recreating a, a whole sort of 18th century interior. You can see how the how the carpet um, is echoed by the by the by the um, crown at the top. And, and, and you have center and corner furniture and center and corner frames. Um, and, and these frames were really part of entire interiors. They were, not, they were not frames to get the most out of a particular painting. They were uh, frames of sort, of sort of parts of vast schemes of interior design. And, and this is sort of an attempt to show, this is not an ent entirely a, 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 a pristine early 18th century uh, roof. But but it shows quite nicely how how the centers of the frame turn up again in the in the in the in the, in the commode and and in the in the seating uh, furniture. So 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 there's a sort of an echo of and they and they go together with the, with with with, with Omelu candelabra. So, so so they are really part of a of a of a sort of overwhelming decorative scheme. And when the National Gallery first in its first um, incarnation. When, 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 when the gallery was kind of created by Act of Parliament in, 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 in 1824 and the, and, the, and, the, and the government bought 160 odd paintings from the Angerstein collection, um, the gallery looked like that in its first, in its first um, form and still very much like an 18th century interior, but without the furniture, but with the frames that were designed to go with furniture, even our our, our NG1, the, the, um, the, the Raising of Lazarus, the big painting um, here on the right, uh, has got a, it, it's had, at that time had still his, his um, um, Orléans collection center corner frame. It, it seems from our point of view completely incongruous to frame a large Italian Renaissance altarpiece in one of those frames. Even the 19th century, actually 19th century very soon uh, the, the National Gallery was the first collection in the world that, that looked at, its, at, at how, the, how the paintings were framed. And by 1850, a Royal Commission was, was, was um, uh, convened and, and the gallery kind of decided how to go forward in, and they had a kind of an increasing collection of early Renaissance altarpieces. Um, and they decided to, to frame them in a way that recalls the original setting. So, so, but instead of buying old frames or, or actually not even copying old frames, they, they kind of made up frames of Renaissance design that at the time were taken to be as good as or, or as, as Renaissance frame, but to us now look very 19th century. Um, and, and, but many of the paintings still retain these frames because they, they are they are also an important step in the gallery. The National Gallery is, 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 is the only one of the major European galleries that didn't derive from a, uh, from a royal collection. So we didn't, never had a, a, a standard frame. So many galleries already come from royal collections and have got a, a, a sort of predominant frame of some, some kind or another. The National Gallery was sort of commercially bought from lots of different sources and, and, and um, uh, uh, does, doesn't have the kind of legacy of, of, of a gallery frame. <coughs> now I'm going slightly um, away from the National Gallery because um, the, the greatest uh, museum person with, with that, that had a kind of strong interest in frames and whose legacy we can still feel today was Willem von Bode, who, who was the um, very important museum director in Berlin um, and who in an, in an article in, in uh, 1912, 
reflects on what the National Gallery, he writes about the National Gallery um, adopted the scheme of, of framing paintings in, in, in frames that, that are um, sympathetic to the origins of, of, of the paintings, uh, orientated by the origins of the paintings. He writes about that in, in, in 1912, but also remarks that the National Gallery um, stopped at having uh, reproduction frames made, whereas he realized that the reproduction frames never look quite the same as the original frames. And, and so he um, predominantly acquired antique frames for his paintings. And, 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 and because he was the director of the museum, later the director of, of, the, of, of, of all the museums in Berlin, he had a lot of freedom and, 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 and he acquired um, large numbers of frames. And, he, and he, in his article, he, he, he mentions these two and, and then a few others, and actually all of them, or the majority of them, are still in their border frame. So, so it's an approach that has um, been vindicated by by a century of, of, of museum uh, life. And they still look now like really good frames, whereas all the 19th century frames the National Gallery had made now look very dated as 19th century frames because the gilding is of different quality. The ornament um, was, was um, done sort of mechanically reproduced rather than carved like ori the original. So, 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 so the Boda approach was, was taking this, it, this idea of the National Gallery, if you want, one step further and really trying to reunite frames with, with paintings with frames that could be taken to be the original frames. And in, actually in one case, for, for a large Faber Romeo, Borda managed to acquire the very original frame of the painting. He knew which church the painting was bought from or, um, and, 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 and then initially the Italian church had, had, the, had the paint, had the Father Bartolomeo replaced by a copy and then about 40 years later um, that copy was then replaced by something else and the frame became available and he, and he acquired it uh, for the gallery. And in a kind of awful uh, twist of fate, um, during the war the frame was just left in the, in the, in the, um, in the, in the cellars of the, of the museum where the painting was put into a secure storage. And in the secure storage, the painting burned, and, the and now they only have the frame left. So that's, that's a, um, uh, so the frame is now in their store without the painting. But Borda's idea went further than just framing pa frames, um, framing paintings in, in their original, in in, in 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 old frames. He he wanted to create a museum that showed um, an entire Renaissance collection. So so furniture, sculpture painting all together in, 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 in his museum. He, he, he um, had this, he built this museum built as a Renaissance museum. He calls it the Kaiser Friedrich Museum, um, very, very um, cleverly at the time, um, uh, named after the reigning monarch to have kind of full political support and had, had, had because of that great freedom and, and established rooms um, that were built to, to show uh, so I think some, some of them with mosaics, some with, with, with um, uh, furniture, uh, paintings, um, sculptures, everything of, of, of the highest quality. Um, that concept, unfortunately, has not been taken up. The, I think the, the, well, the, the way museums are structured is, is very much to separate everything, to just show the paintings, just show the sculptures, just, and, and especially the things like, like um, furnishings get, get moved to, um, away from the so-called high art, um, whereas Borda tried to show everything in, 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 in harmony, and, 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 and that was his vision. And, and, and because of that, the, the, the frames were much more essential. You had to have the right kind of frame if you, if, if you, if you, if you showed it together with, with uh, other objects of art. And then after the war, the, the museum kind of survived. Um, therefore, the frame for the Faber Romeo, which was just housed in the museum, um, uh, survived too. And, and, by, and, and then um, uh, the partition of, of Berlin, the center of Berlin, um, which is there, uh, the historical center ended up in, in, in the Soviet zone. Um, and the, the museum island is really this half of, the, of this island in the middle of the, of the spray. And that, at that very tip is where the, is where the uh, Kaiser Friedrich Museum was. And therefore, in 1956, anything that was um, connected to the, to, the, to, the pre to the old royal family, all to the Prussian imperial family, 
like the like the, um, the the royal palace in Berlin or the royal palace in Potsdam, all, all these w w were torn down, and the Kaiser Friedrich Museum was also on the list of of, of things that would have been um, destroyed. And some clever person had the idea of renaming it the Border Museum. So so now it's called Border Museum, and, and, and since 1956, it's it's the Border Museum in Berlin. And in a very strange, and that's why I, I couldn't resist to to use this picture because I was actually <laughs> born. I was born in that building there, I think there on the second floor. But that was a maternity hospital um, in <laughs> when I was born. So strangely, I have a kind of very near personal connection to, to, the, to this very part of Berlin. <clears throat> but the reason why Borda is kind of, his legacy has lived on and has kind of moved to Berlin is, is, is Frederick Pollock. Uh, he's, he was a German-Jewish frame maker in Berlin, a frame dealer and maker. Um, and he, he managed to get out of Berlin in 1938 together with his collection of frames and establish himself in London. Um, and because of Borders, sort of he, 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 um, not only the museum that he collected frames and paintings for, but, but in order to uh, um, have, have to have sponsors and and, 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 and and more money he he worked a lot with private collectors and, and, and educated those private collectors in in, in, in framing and and in, in, in collecting and helped and advised and therefore in Berlin there was a at the time a center for for, for, for old mass for for, for, for for antique picture frame dealing and, and making and and the first frame exhibition was in Berlin in 1929 with an article of Bodus in the in the in the um, in the catalogue, uh, so so Frederick Pollard uh, brought his business uh, to London together with his frames, and, and the National Gallery acquired some of these great frames, um, and, and this, this is still one of the greatest acquisitions, frame acquisitions the gallery ever um, uh, undertook. A, a, a fantastic um, Alantica tabernacle frame uh, bought from Mantegna's Virgin Child. Um, a frame of exactly the period of com with completely perfect original gilding um, in every way most suitable for, the, for this painting and a, and a completely a, a kind of a, a, a complete change of, of, of quality and of, 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 of um, um, uh, from, from periods sort of 19th century frames previously this is a, it's a complete sea, sea change from that this is really a, a frame that will at any period, look like the right frame. It's, it's, it's you know, as far as what you can tell, this is a, the permanent frame um, forever for this painting, just because of its, its, its suitability and quality. And another frame that, that, that Pollock sold to the gallery also in 1946 is the, is the frame from Michelangelo's in Tomb and also frames of this kind of quality and size um, don't really exist on, uh, on the market anymore. But also he was a maker of frames, and 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 he was originally a, an artist, a painter, and and then then worked with picture frames. And his great skill was in, in creating old-looking old surfaces. Until that period, London frame dealers were still making 19th-century frames, essentially frames with composition ornament and oil gilding, and very little kind of sort of if they made Renaissance frames, they were very much um, sort of. 19th century versions of Renaissance frames. They weren't believable copies. But Pollock um, created these surfaces that very famous for this craqueleur that he, that, that he made um, and, and also the kind of subtleness of, 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 of colors where he kind of um, uses, uses uh, lots of sort of um, uh, not, 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 a, not a strong sort of red but, but, but lots of um, different old colors to, to make to make a surface that looks believably old. Which is interesting is that 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 the frames that he made are distinctive because they are all inventions. They are not actual copies of real frames. They are all kind of a little bit like the 19th century in that sense that he just he just recreated um, uh, frames that, 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 that with old surfaces, but, but but frames that are distinctively Pollock in design. And in, in, in Pollock's wake, he changed completely the, 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 the way frames were made in London. And because London 
has, uh, had after the war had, had, had a lot of the world art trade moved through London, the big auction houses, but also many um, of, the, of the great dealers were in London, a lot of the art going to America. Uh, but, but, but because of that, um, because of all, the, all, all that art that was sold in London, um, a, a large number of frame makers, or a relatively large number of frame makers established themselves in London, and, and, and all of them with uh, quite large workshops. So they had, all had workshops of between 15 and 20 people, um, all of the ones um, up until uh, Arnold Wiggins. And, and the reason I'm, I'm having Arnold Wiggins there in red is because that's where I started working when I first came to, to London in 1990. So that's my connection to, weirdly, to Borders, Berlin, via Pollock, um, and, and Arnold Wiggins, who were working in, in inspired by, by Pollock's quality and in, in the way that Pollock copied old surfaces or, and, or sold old frames. So, so all of these dealers um, had stock of old frames and workshops that were making faithful copies of, of them. And, and now we are at the period when this has again come to an end. Um, none of the workshops have survived. Wiggins um, closed their workshop in early 2000s. Um, all of these, these dealers have all, have all um, ceased trading and, and um, Paul Mitchell and Rollo Waitley work with sort of small self-employed workshops. So, so this, this, this era of large London workshops where people could come and, and, and learn the trade and then, and then, and then uh, um, specialize in, in making old picture frames, um, that has strangely ended. I'm, I now still work with people who I met 30 years ago while I was working there, and all the people I work with uh, in collaboration are of kind of my generation. It's, it's, a, it's a really strange to see that um, most likely this, 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 this period uh, will, will again come to an end, but, but it's, it's, it's interesting how sometimes it, like how it from, from, from Berlin it came to London via really one single person. Um, one never knows how, how it kind of, where it goes next. But we at the National Gallery have a, have a large, we have probably now the largest workshop in London, um, partly because we work on, on paintings for such large, uh, on frames for such large paintings. Um, so we have a large workshop with frames. These are frames of, that we have recently bought and then we, we make frames and we have a variety of approaches to, to, to framing the National Gallery's paintings. So of the 350 odd paintings that are framed, <coughs> the majority about well over half, I would think about 200, um, were reframed with newly acquired antique picture frames, which is it's, it's a quite a long process because you have to find the frames first, then you have to acquire the frame. To start with, I had to find money for each individual frame that has become slightly easier, um, but then the frames have to be restored or quite often changed in size. And sometimes they, they, they fit, but there's always some work involved. And even the kind of the politics of, of because I'm, I can't just change the frames in the gallery. I have to, I, 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 I basically advise the curator so I, I can make suggestions. And, and um, so it's, it's, it's the, the, those 350 frames are really 350 sort of acts of um, uh, various skills in this case for the, for the large Veronese Ver Elevation of the Kings. We bought um, really the, re the, the, the remains of a frame that in Italy, this, this was really, um, very little of this was, 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 was sound, really just that, that piece there, which is still the bottom right-hand corner of this frame, um, that was in, in sound kind of useful state, everything else, and some of it we couldn't even retain. It was, it was really a, 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 a fragment of an old frame, but an opportunity to create something, to make something out of it, and to make something actually much bigger than the original frame, um, but that still retains the flavor of the original because, because we use, and I, you use all the old bits near the bottom and then the entire top is new and, and, and coming down, uh, there's, there are more new pieces. But when you stand in front of it, even I can't because I work with very good people who do the surfaces. I'm a carver myself, so I'm, 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 I have the idea and I work on the wood, but I work with, with very specialized people who, who are able to, to, to copy surfaces to, 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 to to make, to make even something this big completely believable. And so, so in, in, in a similar way, we also reframed um, Leonardo's version of the rocks, which used to be in this 19th century frame. This is very much um, the, the, the kind of 1880s style of, 
of framing the gallery ha ha had three of identical frames made, uh, modeled on a doorway of a Venetian church um, that, that is kind of uh, identifiable by these very uh, distinctive capitals. But, but you can see that, that, that um, if, you, if you model it on a doorway, you just have the pilasters and the architrave. And really, they had no concept of what to do um, with the spandrels at the top or the predella. Those, those were basically um, left un, un, unornamented or un, 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 uh, um, unmotivated. And, and, and the big difference to using old pieces and, and creating something that is, that is um, modeled on, 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 on antique frames is that even so there is a lot more ornament, the ornament is much less distracting because the ornament creates a kind of background rhythm and the, the, the painting is the, is, is, is the main act, whereas in, 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 in this frame, these spandrels and the empty, the empty predella are really disturbing forces in, 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 in the way you can look at the painting. <coughs> And, and how we made this frame is, we, I, I, I found this, these remains really again, um, just just um, fragments of, 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 of an old altarpiece frame at an auction in, in Genoa, an auction of th 3,000 things with, with sideboards and candlesticks and everything, and lot 760 something was, 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 was this frame. And, and we managed to acquire it for the gallery. And it is still the pilasters and, and the architrave at the top are pretty unchanged. I, I left them with all the imperfections and, 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 the, and, and the losses and, and only added the necessary bits to, to fit the painting. And the, the bits that we added were, were informed by this large altarpiece, which is made by the same workshop that made the, the original frame for our uh, Madonna of the Rocks, so the Damaino workshop. Um, made also made this frame, and and luckily the there's, there's, there's also a frame with pilasters of gil, gil, gilded on blue backgrounds, and we could use the roundels for that. For those, the predella is actually this design up there, up there, and even even the the the, the guilloche is, is is repeated at top. So we had we had sort of historical evidence to bring it very close to. And of course, this is not the like the original frame for our painting. Our painting originally was apolyptic. We know that it was it was surrounded by pieces of sculpture and more paintings above. So it's, it's a it's a kind of recreation, not of something that was actually there, but of something that's sympathetic. And I think of something that Leonardo would have also recognized as a frame. <clears throat> so we coming back to the to Mackenzie's watercolor of the of the um, National Gallery at at, at uh, Angerstein's house because. Um, we also refra reframed um, Sebastiano Piombo's Raising of Lazarus, which, which was first in this 18th century frame, which is lost, because uh, that is a bit of a shame, because that would have been a great curios curiosity to have. But by 1967, it was framed in this um, really a, a cornice molding um, uh, that was uh, repurposed as a picture frame that, that is really completely inadequate for, for something of this scale. And, and, and we made a frame um, where I actually I bought at the same auction where I bought the pieces for the Madonna of the Rocks. There was an enormous, really gigantic, this big, um, this deep and, and four meter wide uh, architrave of another frame, but just the top. Um, and, and I bought it speculatively for almost nothing, for like 4,000 euros, um, uh, because I thought this could be the spark for making this enormous frame. Um, because I knew that in, uh, in Narbonne, in the Cathedral of Narbonne, where this, paint, where this painting was, was, was destined when it was, was, was shipped to, um, in the Cathedral of Narbonne, this, the, the predella had survived. So we knew what the bottom of this frame looked like. And, and not only with, with this kind of um, bottom you, you, piece, you, you, do, you, you, know, you also know what the rest of the frame, what type of frame it was. So it must have been an architectural frame with columns at the side and an architrave at the top. And then, and then weirdly, those swags come back over there. So, 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 we, so, so this, this, this piece of, that we managed to acquire had a resonance at the, at, at the Predella design. And then for the Sebastiano Michelangelo exhibition about eight years ago, we actually managed to make uh, the entire frame, which, which, which has, so in, in the, so in the workshop, we, this was the piece that we bought 
um, which were, then was enlarged by a voltmeter and we carved gigantic, th this is an original column that we had uh, uh, as a model, and we carved uh, gigantic versions of it, actually half round, and, and we, we, we new, made the predella piece new and, and capitals, and that, that was really probably the, big, that was the biggest and, and most um, impressive uh, frame that we made. And, and up until recently, it hung in the vista where it makes even more sense because you see it through a doorway and it creates another doorway. And these frames are designed to be doorways. You look, you look through a doorway into, an, into, a, into a devotional space. That's the, that's the function of these frames. Is, 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 is to, 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 to have an outlook into, a, into a, like a magical world, but in a, in a world of, of, of saints and of, and, 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 and of, that you can sort of look at in devotion. But it was, I mean, at the moment, because the gallery has been closed and, 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 and very sort of um, reduced in its space, they've actually put the, this painting back in its, in its 1967 frame, which is a, um, I think it's a great shame, but um, eventually it'll go back into this frame. <clears throat> Another, the, the, the third one of the larger um, uh, autopiece frames um, came from an even stranger, uh, it's an even stranger uh, story because, um, so we, we framed, this is a typical 19th century when they didn't make, when they didn't produce um, autopieces, they, they kind of created Renaissance style moldings and, um, uh, even more sort of abbreviated histor uh, Renaissance style, and the painting kind of uh, becomes much more spatial in the in, in the tabernacle frame. The, the architecture in the in the, in the in the in the background is echoed by by an Antica uh, frame, but this frame um, was already had already become interior design. Some some of these frames are so inexpensive that that they get then used for, for, for very strange purposes. So this, when I, when I, first, when I was first offered this frame, I, the, the Italian frame dealer sent me this picture and I thought, this is just completely crazy. The, the somebody, somebody used it as a, as a bed and cut off the bases of the columns and used them as bedside tables. And the predella had become a sideboard for the television at the, at the, at the foot end of the bed. And it was, it was such an incongruous, mad thing that, that had happened to this item that I, at the time, I, I didn't have any money to buy the frame, but I showed it to somebody at, at, one of, at an event. He said, oh, you must buy this. I, I'll pay for it. So, so that was actually a very easy fundraising because it, it came from such a ridiculous uh, place. So now I'm going to show you a couple of um, sort of before and after. Just to, and I'm, Partly, I just want, to, want you to look at um, the difference so the, the old frame is always on the on the left and the and the, 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 the frame that we replaced it with is is on the right <clears throat> and, and this is partly to make the point that it's not always about making bigger frames or more decorative frames it's often actually the opposite especially the early pictures um, the, uh, the, the mid 15th century pictures originally had very sparse frames um, which were then when these paintings became uh, as, as kind of a tr as some, something that people traded, something that people valued, spent money on, they then were framed in, in more opulent frames, partly because they entered collections with French 18th century frames. So, so in order to, 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 to withstand that kind of um, uh, noise of the, of, 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 the, of, the, um, of, of the of the French gilded 18th century frames, um, these kind of Renaissance gilded kind of frames were were, were invented in the 19th century but this one clearly was invented with with a kind of with the aim of of echoing the, the extraordinary ornament but the the the, 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 the effect of it is a complete sort of cacophony of, of swirling ornament where where the figure herself is is, is, is entirely lost amongst all this um, uh, movement whereas in in the in the drier and that's actually old frame. This is a, an actual 15th century frame, very rare to buy because, because once they were taken off paintings um, up until very recently, they were just discarded because they were just, they were not thought to be worth anything because they were just, they're just thin, slightly worn old moldings. But it has a, I think it has a wonderful fra effect on this painting. It really makes the figure majestic 
and, and, and the ornament is there, but it's, it, 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 it doesn't compete with, 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 the, with the frame, and even the landscape is suddenly, suddenly legible in this, in this. And this is another um, reframing where a simpler frame, a more austere frame, um, really brings out something different in the painting. This is a, this, for some reason, the Bellini ended up in a 17th century Spanish frame, very expressive red background, big carved flowers, big shells in the corners. But the, the much simpler early 16th century Italian frame is, 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 is a much more harmonious surround, works much better with, 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 with the painted parapet, um, the landscape, even the, even the um, curtain in the background, which sort of hangs off the frame Weirdly, there are, you can't you can only just see, but there are actual hanging hooks of a curtain at the corners of the frame. So this frame was a frame for a religious uh, image. And in Italy, still, you sometimes see them with metal rods across. There wasn't a permanent curtain there, but there was the, 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 the possibility of hanging a curtain for Easter week over the, over the image. Um, and and we, I've, I've acquired several frames with that device for the gallery. This is something else that, that, that was lost in, in the kind of reframing of paintings over the centuries. Um, because when, when paintings became collectible and were collected by, often by, by um, palatial collections, uh, only gold frames could possibly survive. Um, we know from inventories of the 16th century that more than half the paintings were framed in walnut frames and wooden frames or wooden and gold frames. They're never particularly specific about the, the, the design of the frame, but they usually say gold frame, walnut frame, or walnut and gold frame. So, so I almost reintroduced, I think we had one walnut frame at the National Gallery. Um, this is one that we bought uh, that is of superb quality, was the right size for the painting. So that also sometimes happens, that we find frames that are exactly the right size, where we do have to, have to do very little to, to the frame. Um, these are... This is, this is the physician and his son, uh, painted by Lorenzo Lotto, um, and, and to my eye, much, much happier, because they're, they're not courtiers, they're not, they're not gentlemen, they're, 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 they're working men of the, of the, of the highest um, uh, achievement, but, they're, but they're, they're, they have a different sort of pride and, 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 and outlook, and, and I think the, the, the kind of high-quality wooden frame um, is, 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 is really the appropriate um, surround for those. And this is another um, instance where we have removed uh, a, a sort of Renaissance-style gold frame and replaced it by a period walnut frame. The sitter obviously sitting in a simple wooden chair. I think it's a, it's a poet and a friend of the, of, of, of the artist, um, much more at ease in the, in, in the simpler wooden frame. And then something completely different, uh, a Murillo uh, Spanish painting for some reason ended up in this kind of neoclassical um, Spanish gray frame and we found a, a period 17th century Spanish frame, uh, uh, um, black and gold reverse molding frame that also fitted exactly. So, 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 so I'm showing you a slightly random pick of the 350 um, reframings, but some, just, to, just to show, and again, I think the, 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 the frame um, just sits much happier, much softer on the painting, um, and, and evokes a, a, a Spanish interior of the 17th century. And then um, we, uh, we've reframed a lot of the Dutch pictures, um, especially the Dutch pictures came en masse through uh, French collections, either in French frames or people were so used to looking at these paintings in French frames um, that, that they were framed in those frames in the, in, the, in the 19th century. This is a 19th century framing. The frame was adapted and, and the surface was nowhere near as fine as the surface on the, on the Poussin. We've got one Rembrandt portrait, which I haven't got here, that is, has got a perfect, like a, like a high quality um, French 18th century frame that was probably made for the painting and that will remain in that frame. 
is because it's 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 a frame of such quality and and a, and a kind of indication where the painting came from. But this was just put around in the eighteen in, in the nineteenth century, and and we acquired a, an, an ebony frame of, of of really great quality, bought in Madrid actually, um, um, also the right size for it, and and it it does transform the painting because here Rembrandt's head kind of looks out of a sort of soup of yellows and browns um, move from, from frame to, 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 to body and really the, the head almost swims like, like the moon in the middle of it, whereas this frame um, makes the body much more free. All well, the space works better, but, you, but especially that, that arm um, sits much more um, three-dimensional in the, in, the, in the frame. And this, this is um, a Van Dyck portrait again I mean, almost without explanation, the frame on the left is, is a 19th century kind of a, a bowl of gilded spaghetti with the, with the painting in the middle, whereas the frame on the right is, is just, it just sits so much more um, gentle and, 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 and correctly on the, on the painting. A walnut frame, Flemish, of the period. And we also um, frame, of course, frame... Um, more modern pictures. Degas had a great interest in, in frames. These frames, th these frame, these frames are called Degas frames. He made drawings of these frames. Um, he was quite fanatical about about the framing of his pictures. There's a there's a story where where he he, he goes to dinner at, at one of his patrons, and the patron um, proudly shows him the, the the reframed his reframed painting, and Degas takes it off the wall and takes it home with him because he was so appalled by somebody changing his frame. So, so he was quite militant about frames, but, but ne uh, nevertheless, people over the years um, have framed Degas just in the same French 18th century frame, which was the norm for, for framing um, uh, old master paintings. And, and I find it particularly awful, these cloth-covered slips, which is a kind of 1970s uh, invention. Um, it creates a weird sort of distance and a weird disharmony, uh, whereas the, the simple Degas frame really gives 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 completely different um, sense of, 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 of the artwork. And this is another, another Degas portrait. Again, the, 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 the Degas style readed frame. Um, uh, it, it, this, is, this is such a kind of dynamic composition. It really, I, I love the painting. It, it, it looks like somebody who's, who's just about had enough of Degas painting her and she, she, she's just about to get up. And you can see he, he, he kind of changed the shoulder was was down, and she was I think more in profile, and and, and you can see the, the the shoulder was there, and then he paints the shoulder really as if she's just about to kind of ha just had enough, um, and 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 this frame allows the kind of freedom of of, of that um, sort of very un un kind of old masterly uh, way of painting, whereas. Whereas this frame is, is really a, a, an 18th century frame with sort of glowering toads at the corner, kind of really kind of keeping her in, in, in this kind of rigid format. Whereas I, I think this is my interpretation, probably um, slightly militant, but but um, um, I think that's a, that's uh, a very successful frame. Another frame, the, the, the Corinth portrait, Lovis Corinth, German artist, um, late 19th century, uh, came in this shockingly awful frame. I mean that that. that we had actually kept the frame just for comedy value, but this is really an uh, um, incredible way of framing a, a valuable painting. And we found a really nice uh, um, early 20th century uh, wedge section frame with a tiny little, it doesn't come across so well, but it has got a tiny little edge of gold with, which, which is echoed by his ring. He's got a ring with a tiny line of gold and also his glasses. All that kind of is echoed by the frame in a, in a, in a, in a picked up in a, really in a really nice way. Also, the volume of the person works better in, 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 in that frame. And another function of frames um, is that, that we sometimes frame entire exhibitions in old frames. So for the Poesie exhibition, which sadly was almost entirely um, without visitors because it fell right in the middle of COVID, um, but the National Gallery brought together for the first time in 500 years a group of paintings that were painted for Philip II of Spain by Titian, so for the, for the greatest um, emperor at the time, or one of the great, great emperors at the time, um, very important commission. Um, he painted 
uh, six of these um, his poesies, so it's poetry, um, poetry and painting, um, but they were all they've all ended up in different frames. Uh, the Wallace Collection, um, um, the Stuart Gardner Museum in in in, in Boston, um, the Welling Duke of Wellington Collection, the Apsley House, uh, the Prado, and and those two uh, at the National Gallery. Uh, but all in different frames, and the decision was made to, to, to unify them. And, and the, they have a unified frame, just almost as you look at the paintings, they just visually belong together, so you don't have to worry about the frame in that sense. And many people probably wouldn't have noticed, even noticed the frame. None of the reviewers noticed the frames, even so it's such a kind of change to, 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 to what it looked like. Um, and uh, we made frames that were based on uh, a, a, an original Titian design, and when we made them in, in, in our workshops, a fully carved, uh, really a, an enormous um, effort for, for, for framing a temporary exhibition. And, but, but very gratifying that, that, that afterwards, all the institutions, even the ones that weren't interested in, in having these frames, like the Prado, have actually kept this frame on as their permanent frame. Only the Stuart Gardner Museum in Boston, where the Titian hangs in a, in, in a kind of French... 18th century style room amongst, uh, above a, an 18th century uh, writing desk. So they put it back in the 19th century, 18th century style frame. But, uh, but all the other, even Apsley House have kept, have kept the Duke of Wellington have kept, has kept um, our, our frame, which was, which was very nice. So this is what the exhibition looked like in, in part. But, um, and just to, sh uh, to show one of the paintings, which I think has, has suffered the greatest in, in, in having lost its original frame is um, Bellini San Giobbe uh, altarpiece, which is uh, still exhibited at the uh, Academia in, 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 in Venice like this. Uh, Napoleon took it out of the church and moved it into the Academia. Um, uh, and and it, looks, it looks sort of flattish and, and, this, and this kind of, the, um, the this, this ceiling looks, looks as if it kind of goes upwards and, and just upwards, whereas in the original frame, which is still at the, in the church in San Giobbe, it's, it's, it's completely, the frame is completely part of, of the image. Bellini painted exactly the same pilasters. They're connected visually to, 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 to the physical uh, pilasters. The, the coffered ceiling ending in, in, in the frame suddenly creates a space, a, a room, and it's, it, it, it's, it's logical that you want to do that. When you go into the church, it, it, San Giobbe um, has actual physical chapels on the left-hand side and just a wall on the right-hand side. So having on the right-hand side paintings that create a, 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 a believable three-dimensional space was just Bellini's way of, 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 of partly showing off, look, architects build this, but I can, I can do the same with painting. But also it was a, it was a kind of welcome balancing of, of the architecture. So, 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 so to, to show this painting um, when, when you know what frame it has, like this at the moment, I think is 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 a is really a, a, a diminishing, a, a kind of a denying of the of 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 the artistic quality. Really, it's 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 turned into into a specimen. It's no longer a work of art, fully. And and the the last thing I'm showing you uh, is is a, also recent reframing. So for the for the Raphael exhibition last year, we bought this. We we just by coincidence we acquired a frame. Um, a great kind of uh, altarpiece frame, but a small for, for a small painting, um, really a painting that would have hung in a small private chapel in, in a frame like this. So previously it was in a in a portrait frame, and we put it into an, an antica frame. Um, again, the, the 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 effect on the paint on 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 the on the on the, on the composition is that that whereas here it looks a little bit like a sort of awkward portrait in this frame. It becomes the, because the frame somehow seems to continue the person. So the person, the, the, the Saint Catherine, becomes a much more monumental figure. But also, strangely, with with the sides of the frame being very shallow and very light, the landscape suddenly expands. So both the landscape um, becomes more legible, and the figure becomes more 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 imposing. And with this kind of big dome at the top like like the ark of heaven you you, you you really create something that is a devotional picture rather than a gallery picture that you walk past this really stops you in your tracks and what also happens sometimes when you 
find the right frame. Um, you look at paintings differently. Usually the edges of paintings become more legible or suddenly make more sense because um, Raphael painted these little, these are, these are bitter herbs. They're bitter herbs to symbolize the passion of Christ. So you have um, uh, dandelions and other bitter herbs um, grown in, in, in the foreground. Um, but where are they in the painting? Um, they can't be growing on the ground because this is St. Catherine standing, so her knee is about there, her foot will be down here. So, so this would be a dandelion that would grow up over a meter from the ground. Um, they can also not be behind her because they'd be much smaller. Raphael painted them to come out of the ledge of the frame. It, it needs to have a frame with, with a, a sill, like a window, like a, like a ledge, where in the cracks herbs could, 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 could grow. And I think Raphael painted the painting for a frame like that, or possibly even into a frame like that, because, because these little plants make no sense in a frame like that. They, they, they are nowhere, whereas in this frame they are actually anchored. Is, that is the end of end of my talk. I thought I'd finish off with, and it's 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 really it's just scratching the surface of the subject. Of course, that is for me um, very big. I would try to um, bring it to something uh, that 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 hopefully encourage you to uh, look at frames and, and 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 see what frames can can do to painting. Thank you very much. You're asking us for the starting point um, um, for frame. Quite often, and we are doing it really the wrong way around. Most museums will pick a painting and then start to look for, for a frame. And that way around, you, you, you have to go to the big major frame dealers because they have stocks and, and of, of frames. But you, you kind of rely both on the availability and the taste of frame dealers. Um, whereas I look for frames first, so I find the frames like in this case, the, the, the Italian dealer sent me a photograph of the frame, said, I've got this frame. And then, and then I either look at our database or in this case, I actually, I, I sat in a train to Cambridge thinking, the rough way is about the right size. Uh, so, 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 but but it's, 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 it's driven by the kind of um, appearance of frames on the market. Um, and also, we, because of we're doing it that way around, we have found a lot more frames that were the right size and a lot more sort of surprising combinations because when you look for frames the other way around, you always you have already had an idea of what kind of frame you're looking for, whereas if you start with a frame, you're much more led by sort of historical patterns that, and then you, then you think about what, what, what frames you can put with them. So I think we, my, my worry is always that, that, that we carry too much of, of, of ourselves around. That's why the copies usually don't work because the copies of the 1970s that looked perfect in the 1970s now look dated. The ones of the 1950s look 1950s to us. So, so, so by, by kind of having a, uh, um, a more kind of, by being led by the surprise of what, what we can find, I think we try to take that out a little bit. Hope that answers the question. But usually from the frame. Yes, the, the, the frames. Oh, sorry, the, the, yeah, uh, the frames. The question of, of the, the influence of architecture on frames. Yes, I mean French 18th century frames are entirely part of the architecture. For instance, um, uh, frames have have a link between the kind of the architecture and 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 the, and the paintings. Really, the, the 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 early Italian frames, the kind of architectural frames, are obviously linked to architecture. <coughs> That link changes in the 19th century when artists have more uh, have more of an interest and influence on 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 on, on frames like Degas, um, probably less architectural driven. But 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 frames are architectural elements as well as sort of surrounds with paintings. Yes. 
question of the weight of frames uh, and how to fix them. Well, the larger frames are supported by brackets. And even when they have plinths underneath them, the plinths are usually for show. Um, they're held by, by steel brackets uh, in the gallery, mostly. Uh, anything is kind of above 100 kilos. I think below that, it's hang, hang, hanging on wall fixture, fixtures and, and, and chains. Actually, the most, the heaviest part um, uh, in, in framing pictures is the glass, when we have to glaze pictures because of attacks and, 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 and sort of environmental dangers. Um, that adds the greatest weight because the glass is, is usually two sheets of glass, laminated glass, and that's very heavy. Often adds like 60 kilos to a frame. Yeah, there is, there is, of course, because of, because of uh, the recent attacks, there's a, at the moment we're glazing a lot more than we used to glaze. But National Gallery's policy used to be that everything was without glass except for the paintings that were either previously attacked or were vulnerable or unvarnished paintings. But the National Gallery was, it's much more immediate to see a painting without glass. Um, if you, those of you who go to the Louvre and see the Mona Lisa behind whatever thick glass there is, there could be anything behind there, um, you lose completely. Also, you lose, you lose that sense of, of a real object, and that's partly what frames, the right frames do. They give a sense of, a, of, a, of, an, an, of an old object, of a, of a, of a, of a thing that, you, that has a, 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 a three-dimensional real life. It's not just an image on the screen or a, or, 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 or a picture behind glass. Um, but it increasingly, things are glazed. Yes, yes, frame, frames can also damage paintings, especially um, really up until fairly recently. Uh, now we line frames on the inside with velvet routinely, everything, but, but until recently th that wasn't done and, and, and quite a lot of paintings have scuff marks around the edges, usually just scuffing the, the, the varnish, so, so it very rarely damages the paintings themselves. Um, but that's really the only, otherwise frames really are an essential part of the protection of paintings that makes it much safer to move paintings um, in frames. So frames are really part of, the, of, 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 the, of, of, of making it safe to handle paintings. Are you thinking about wall twist for paintings? No, not, uh, not to my knowledge, no. I mean, paintings, paintings twist when they're painted on, on, um, uh, on, on boards, on, on wood, uh, wood panels. Um, but very rarely, I mean, unless the frame is too fiercely secured to the paintings, then possibly sometimes it can, it can restrict the movement of the painting, but it's very rare, actually. Yes, yes, that is, that's also a consideration, but yeah, it's not, it, it, when I first came to the gallery, I thought one would have to kind of rethink of what hangs next to it, but, but a, a place like the National Gallery is constantly rehanging re -hanging all the works. We are lending about 200 pictures a year, and some European museums will just lend a picture, and there's a sign, this is on loan for two, weeks, for, for two months, and, and there's nothing on the wall, whereas the National Gallery will always fill those holes and usually change all the, the rooms completely around. So, the, so there's, a, there's a much more movement amongst the paintings than you think. So you cannot really frame paintings with the idea of, oh, it's going to always hang next to that. Um, but the approach that, that, that we have and that Boda had, and he also remarks on that in his article, of framing um, paintings in frames of the period and of the, of the origin, and then you end up with a Venetian 16th century room with Venetian 16th century painting uh, frames on Venetian 16th century paintings, and those in some way relate to each other. So in whichever combination they hang, they look right because it's kind of sympathetic. No, sadly, sadly, there's. N I, I, I have just recently had somebody who came in for a couple of days to do to do to do a, a practice uh, to, to, to work with us for a bit. But we don't really have a structured program or the ability. And also, I am split between my private practice, where I have a, wo a workshop two days a week that I work in privately, and I'm three days a week at the National Gallery. There isn't really the 
time in, in either place to, 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 to kind of have someone there to, to my workshops, my, my private workshop is not big enough and the, the National Gallery, um, we just don't have the, we don't have the, 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 the structure. It's a shame, I, I, I'm conscious of, the, of, of, of that as uh, something ideally one would want to change. Yes, no, it's more, it's more the other way around. Um, restoration work, cleaning, cleaning of pictures is often what sparks a, a reframing as well. So, so we do fr frame, for instance, the recent um, restoration on the, of, of the um, Piero Francesca's um, um, nativity. Uh, we, we, we then um, reframe the painting. Sometimes in, in, in con when conservation work happens, um, the size of painting changes, changes because additions are taken off or or pieces of the painting are revealed and, and the size changes and, and you need to have a different frame. But so, so, so maybe possibly 10, 20% of our reframings are sparked by conservation work. But not very rarely does um, the reframing um, trigger cleaning. That is, is less often. But sometimes I've reframed a, a Caravaggio, a Caravaggio, the boy bitten by a lizard, um, and, and somebody from the education department asked the conservation department whether they have done some treatment on the painting because it looked so different in the new frame. So it had almost the effect of a, of a conservation treatment without anything happening to the painting. Um, yes, I mean, it, it sometimes happens that things are, um, or things just leave on, on loan um, and, 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 and the reframing is postponed. But I, I, I view the work that we do as very much something for, 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 for the long term. So, so, so a delay in, in, a, in a few years or in a few months is, is not really of, of great concern. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure some people will walk through even art galleries and look at, uh, look at the art with some kind of less care in their eyes. But um, I feel like it's such a shame that uh, such passion and beauty and even the frames goes unnoticed by most people. And uh, what springs to mind for me is uh, the 2018 auction in which uh, Banksy shredded one of his paintings through its frame. Mm. And um, at which point I, f I believe that the frame which the art is housed in becomes part of the art itself, which is something you mentioned with uh, the Bellini and the Raphael. So uh, I think when we all go to a gallery again, we'll look more deeply at the frames around them because as you've outlined, they really do matter. So thank you, Peter. Thank you.